Hi, uh, with the second part of uh, heat treatment of steel grates, we will study about the mechanical behavior of iron carbon alloys. In the previous lecture, we have learned about the TTT curve and CCT curve. And here we will uh, see the application of this uh, two type of curves uh, by and when we uh, provide the heat treatment and uh, and how we check the the mechanical properties of this uh, alloys <clears throat> so we will start with the perlite <clears throat> so here uh, increasing the fraction of cementite in steel alloy while holding the other uh, microstructure of the elements constant will result in a harder and a stronger material which means that if you increase the carbon content or the cementine con content in the perlite, it will uh, make your uh, perlite harder and stronger. But on the other hand, we have to keep in mind that cementite is a harder but more brittle than ferrite. So let's see how this, um, this um, physical properties are changing. So in this graph uh, here at figure number 5.12 um, graph number one you see that yield strength tensile strength and hardness is plotted versus carbon concentration for plain carbon still here is your carbon concentration and here are the other factors so you can see that all this factor this yield strength hardness and tensile strength is increasing with increase of this carbon content on the other hand if i see this um, graph number b which where the ductility is plotted against the um, carbon content you see the ductility is decreasing it's continuously decreasing if you keep on increasing the content of carbon so here is the in conclusion, tensile, tensile ill strengths as well as the Brunel hardness number are plotted as a function of white carbon steel which are composed of fine perlite and this shows that the second one when we uh, vary this uh, property of ductility and toughness with the carbon content that uh, the ductility and toughness decreases with increase in carbon content in our perlite. So, existence of large degree of adherence between the uh, ferrite and cementite phases across the grain boundaries in case of perlite. Okay, so this means that the reason why it happens is that um, if there is, a, um, there, there is a large adherence, I mean, or attraction between the ferrite and cementite, um, between these two phases at the grain boundaries. Therefore, the strong and rigid cementite phases phase uh, Serverly, it will restrict the deformation of the softer ferrite phase in the region adjacent to it. Hence, it will give uh, give the necessary strength to the perlite. So next is uh, is ferrodite. So we already know what is ferrodite, and uh, here you see that alloys containing perlitic microstructure have greater strength and hardness than they those with spherodite so it's very clear here in this picture see the hardness of fine perlite is the highest then coarse perlite is um, is less than fine perlite while spherodite has minimum uh, strength and here you see the hardness number is decreasing so it have a minimum strength mm. <clears throat> and uh, spherodite steels are extremely ductile okay so here the ductility is plotted so spherodite is extremely ductile whereas fine perlite uh, is the least ductile and coarse perlite um, rest at the middle of uh, both of them so let's move to bainite so in bainite you see generally bainite are stronger and harder than perlitic ones so this is the perlite uh, section and this is the bainite section and it's very clear that bainite is um, stronger and harder as compared to perlite. 
yet they exhibit the desirable combination of strength and ductility okay so these are the mechanical properties of bainite next we'll move to martensite out of all steel alloys martensite is the hardest and strongest we already know that and it's the most brittle one so when i say it's the most brittle one that means it have a very negligible ductility and if uh, this brinel hardness number is plotted uh, pl is plotted against the composition the carbon um, percentage composite composition you see that it has the hardest 65 hardest or strongest um, or the highest and this um, hardness here and uh, <clears throat> on the other hand perlite is the um, least i'll say ha hard or stronger material if we comp compare this martensite tempered martensite and fine perlite next is tempered martensite now uh, since we haven't discussed much about tempered martensite before so let's see what is tempered martensite tempering is a Tempering is actually a heat treatment. Uh, we, um, we will going forward. We'll learn about tempering also. So tempering is accomplished by heating a martensitic steel to a temperature below you tectoid for a specific time period. So this is how you get tempered martensite. You um, you do the certain uh, heat treatment to the martensite and you get dif a different type of martensite. And the reaction is given as martensite, which is a single phase, will convert to tempered martensite, which, which is a combination of ferrite plus carbide phases. So, the let's see. Um, the next point is that the microstructure of tempered martensite consists of extremely small and uniformly dispersed cementite particles embedded within a continuous ferrite matrix. Tempered martensite may be nearly as hard as strong as martensite, but substantially enhance ductility and toughness. So it's, it's simply, since martensite we know is very hard and brittle phase, we, we, we want uh, better mechanical properties. We want hardness and it should be strong. At the, at the same time, it shouldn't be brittle. So we want something that is hard, but um, have a good uh, ductility property. And hence, uh, the martensite is tempered and we, uh, we obtain the tempered martensite. So, it's mentioned the tempering is done at 371 degree Celsius. So, here the size of the um, uh, cementite particle will influence the mechanical behavior of the tempered martensite. Increasing the particle size uh, will decrease the... Um, uh, ferrite cementite phase boundary area and uh, and consequently it will result into a softer and weaker material which will be on the other hand tough and more ductile which what we were looking for so let's see next so here you see that uh, we have a um, summary of all the Mm, different types of um, byproduct that we get after uh, austenite to this eutectoid after this eutectoid reaction after eutectoid transformation there um, the phases present the mechanical properties as well as the what kind of microstructure we will get everything is given here so let's see mm. What is next yes yeah, so here we get the heat treatment so uh, since the whole uh, point of um, dealing with all these things that we have done in part one and two is to understand the heat treatment of steel grades so heat treatments are basically divided into i mean they are basically of two types first is the bulk heat treatment and another is the surface heat treatment so um, Again, surface heat treatment are of two types, thermal and thermochemical. Surface heat treatment means you uh, treat, you, you, you provide the heat treatment uh, only on the surface of your uh, sample, not to the bulk, only the surface. So, the, uh, so in thermal surface heat treatment, you, um, you treat the surface or you... Um, yeah yeah you treat the surface with uh, 
some kind of uh, flame i'll say like induction laser or electron beam and that will uh, that will bring some changes on the surface and uh, and one should do it as per need or as, as per requirement as per which kind of properties one is looking for in the you know, sample or in in his product so as per that uh, it, this has been done and another is thermochemical uh, heat treatment which is carburizing carburizing means you are sorry you are um, allowing your uh, sample to get uh, in the atmosphere of carbon or i can say that the carbon is allowed to diffuse on the surface of your um, product then is nitriding nitriding means you are allowing nitrogen to diffuse on the surface of your product and number three is carbon nitriding which means that you are allowing both carbon and nitrogen to diffuse on the surface of your product so um, and we see that uh, like uh, by changing the chemistry of the uh, chemistry the microstructure can be changed as well as the mechanical properties also can be changed but uh, the point um, that, so our focus is not on the surface treatment so we will not study the surface treatment broadly while we will on the other hand we will discuss more about the bulk treatment because we are more interested in the bulk heat treatment so bulk heat treatment are basically of divided into three types mm, first one is annealing annealing is uh, our uh, full annealing which is the normal we call it annealing next is a recrystallization annealing stress relief annealing is periodization annealing another heat treatment is normalizing and then hardening and tampering and then we get to special cases that is this are mar tampering and os tampering so one by one we will study about all this heat treatment so and one more thing before even we start the heat treatment uh, i like to concentrate a little bit on the uh, on the on the uh, like holding temperatures on the temperature limits on which you do this particular i'll say in this heat treatments and here you see this is the portion of the iron iron carbon phase diagram where the eutectic phase transformation took place this is the portion where the steel is actually uh, forming so in we have three very important temperatures or critical temperatures a1 isotherm at eutectic temperature here this is a1 a1 is the temperature where um, you got uh, this eutectoid uh, um, transformation where the eutectoid transformation took place next is a3 here is a3 and uh, a3 is the phase boundary between austenite and um, austenite and ferrite so this is austenite and austenite and ferrite and this is the phase boundary between them so this is a3 next is acm so acm is the phase boundary between again austenite and um, this uh, austenite and cementite so please remember and keep in mind very clearly about the, this three critical temperature a1 here a3 at this position and acm at this position and um and i i want to uh, uh like i want to i want you to keep in mind one more thing let's see if i say some um, some cooling is done below a1 you have to always keep in mind that below a1 there is no transformation is taking place so here you see there is no transformation is taking place but above a1 or at a1 on, on this position yes some transformation is taking place but or the in the vicinity of these lines yes transformation is taking place because here uh, a new field phase at this position some new phase will nucleate and grow as and we already have discussed and we know about it so see the position of this heat treatment so annealing is done above a3 some type of there since there are four types of annealing some of the type one of the type is uh, annealing is done above here above a3 
and at this position also while normalizing is, is done above ACM and above uh, A3 on the other hand spherodization is done always below A1 pre-crystallization annealing below A1 stress relieving below A1 so at this point you don't need to worry about like which um, heat treatment is uh, taking place at which uh, temperature temperature zone as we are going to discuss one by one all the heat treatment and then we'll understand and this is like a summary of whatever we are going to discuss um, in the upcoming slides and one more thing in I, um, like i want you to see is that here you can see a cct diagram this is your cct diagram and on CCT diagram, if you see carefully, some, um, some of the schooling rates are plotted on the CCT diagram. And so you see for furnace cooling here, for furnace cooling annealing, the, <clears throat> the cooling rate is very slow. Here, the cooling rate is very slow and for air cooling normalizing it's um, it's faster compared to this one and uh, if you do oil quenching it's again faster compared to air cooling normalizing and uh, if you do water quen quenching it's very fast okay now you must be wondering why i'm telling you all these things and what is furnace cooling and air cooling and all okay so uh, if i say furnace cooling annealing that means that um, the furnace is kept at a particular temperature for some time so that the whole product is heated homogeneously to that temperature and then you switched off the furnace and hence the furnace is going to cool as well as your product uh, and uh, since the furnace itself is heated up it will take a lot of time so cooling rate is slow or the or what you can do the you can uh, you can take out the product from the furnace and in air it will get cooled and you can let it get cooled in air through convection currents and the co cooling rate is next time higher when compared to this one <clears throat> And uh, that is what is we call is air cooling normalizing um, or one can do also oil quenching that means you put your material in oil and let it get cooled the heated product will be quenched in oil which is much faster than uh, the, your uh, air cooling so now you can uh, also understand if you do furnace cooling and kneeling what kind of microstructure you will get see furnace cooling annealing the um, the start and end point that this uh, cooling rate has crossed both the start and end point of a particular kind of transformation so basically hopefully it's perlite so you you know that you are getting perlite if you do furnace cooling annealing uh, maybe it's a coarse perlite and on the other hand if you do air cooling normalizing again you see you get some perlite but what if um what if i do uh, oil quenching in oil quenching you see this uh this cooling rate has touched or crossed the start uh, starting point or the the uh, beginning curve at this point and uh, um, but it hasn't crossed the ending curve of the same kind of transformation so which means that in in this case uh, some austenite in this case what will happen some austenite will transform into perlite and the remaining austenite see this curve again touching this ms um, temperature zone which means martensite starting temperature zone that means some of the austenite will transform into perlite and the remaining austenite will transform into martensite on the other hand 
if you do water quenching here you see if you do water quenching and the you will be able to skip the nose this is the nose skip the nose of the cct um, curve and hence there will be no diffusional transformation and the cool and the cooling will be fast enough um, to directly go to the martensitic phase so um, so now you can understand why this cct diagram is important because see with even um, like even before you start or perform your heat treatment you can predict that what kind of microstructure you will get or like uh, your desire you can design your heat treatment according to uh, what kind of microstructure you get so that is why the cct diagram is important to us now let's see the different heat treatments and uh, we will start with annealing so <clears throat> So when I say annealing means uh, um, this is uh, like we are heating up this uh, our sample or we call it as full annealing also which is the same thing. So here you see heating temperature is above 50, uh, 50 degree of A3 for hyperdeutectoid and above uh, 50 degree above A1 for um, sorry it's um, <clears throat> about 50 degree above a3 for hypoeutectoid and above a1 for i mean 50 degree above a1 for hyperutectoid so we can go to the slide and here you see for annealing for <clears throat> here 50 degree above a3 and this is 50 degree above a1 so for uh, hyper and hypoeutectoid we got the um, temperature up to which we have to heat it up now cooling now how, how you will do the cool cooling so for um, this full annealing we need uh, we are look we want furnace cooling and uh, <clears throat> and uh, what kind of microstructure and properties will be expected so you will get coarse microstructure lower strength and high ductility now this is uh, there is a very important thing that uh, i told you for hyperutectoid you heat up in the um, material 50 degree above the a1 temperature but one thing we should always keep in mind that we will not cross acm though we are above a1 but we will not cross acm temperature so the heating zone will be somewhere in the middle but we will not cross ACM so let's see what is the reason so here it's note in, it's written the hyperutectoid steel uh, is heating done below ACM this is done to avoid the formation of continuous network of pro eutectoid cementite on prior austenite grain boundaries okay so uh, um, what it happens is that the cementite normally it have a uh, it deforms at the green boundaries so, oh, so so it's very easy when the cementite will form at the green boundaries it's very easy for cementite to form a continuous network of cementite throughout your uh, throughout the grain so since a cementite is a hard and brittle phase so if there will be any crack in your material it will be very easy to go along for the crack to through the boundaries and there will be a high probability that your sample will fail so the presence of network of cementite provide easy path for crack propagation and we do not want this kind of like we do not want our material to fail so to avoid such kind of uh, occurrence um, this annealing is always done below the ACN temperature so okay so next one is our normalizing normalizing is done above a3 for hypoeutectoid and above acm for hyper hyperutectoid and cooling will be always air cooling and expected microstructure is a fine microstructure compared to annealed one more strength and lower ductility than any steel and uh, in note it's given then that um, 
in hyperetectoid steel normalizing is done above acm remember in annealing we told that we cannot do it above acm but in normalizing we are doing it above acm so now why uh, why we can do it here because due to faster cooling cementite does not form a continuous film along the grain boundary so we do not have the um we, we do not have the uh, pr problem of forming this uh, network of cementite um, throughout our grain so we can do normalizing even above ACM temperature so the next one is spheroidization of annealing so when we get uh, cementite so as I told in the annealing normal annealing or full annealing we get cementite at the green boundaries or or the or anyways in perlite also we get lamellar uh, lamellar elongated cementite and it is not a very a good microstructure for getting the standard mechanical properties so uh, to take care of that long cementite layers we do something called this spheroidization annealing and uh, which means we are looking for spherical cementite instead of long lamellae or networks so let's see how we can do this spherization annealing mm. <clears throat> here you see that heating temperature below a1 to transfer, transform lamellar cementite to globular cementite so if you remember the acm temperature here you see the acm temperature you can see just below the acm temperature spheroidization is done so by spheroidization we are trying to we are just there is no phase transformation but um, but uh, you are just trying to improve the microstructure by transforming the um, this lamellar cementite to the globular cementite and cooling is not specific as no phase transformation is occurring so I, I we have already discussed and we saw that there is no phase transformation is uh, taking place so we will uh, not worry much about uh, like uh, what kind of cooling it is on the other hand you can actually choose the um, kind of cooling you want depending on the size of your material for example uh, if you have a huge uh, product or huge sample uh, you shouldn't do uh, fast cooling because if you do fast cooling thermal stress stress will come to play in the material and uh, and if there will be some if there will be thermal stress we again have to remove the thermal stress which is also not good for the mechanical properties of your sample hence cooling can be decided depending on the you know, the size of the material and uh, the expected microstructure and property globular cementite in ferrite matrix okay that is that is why we are doing this spheroidization annealing and next is expected to increase both strength and ductility so this is the this kind of property we are looking for we are not we we, we are not looking for something that is str strong yet brittle but we are looking for something that is strong but ductile so that we can um, we can use it as per need so in note it's given uh, long time heating leads to cementite plates to form cementite spheroids spheroids here you see the uh, spherical uh, cementite gray um, cementite is there in the alpha matrix alpha ferrite matrix the driving force is the reduction of interfacial energy okay so this is all about the spheroidization so let's see what is next next is stress stress relief annealing so uh, normally now why we need this stress relief annealing uh, actually when we, we do this plastic deformation we introduce stress in the material that are not good for most of the service applications Hence, we need to uh, do relieving of the stress throughout this operation. Hence, to relieve stress developed during cold working, machining or welding, um, 
uh, this stress relief annealing is done so heating temperature below recrystallization temperature again this is also below the a1 temperature zone recovery is the dominant mechanism during this process cooling is not specific okay although slow enough so that so as not to introduce thermal stress so every time you do fast cooling you introduce some thermal stress so since we here we are trying to remove the thermal stress so the cooling must shouldn't be too fast although it's not specific but it shouldn't be too fast so that more thermal stress is not uh, introduced into your product expected microstructure no significant change in the microstructure stresses will be relieved and properties will be restored as observed before the particular operation next is recrystallization so we are well aware of what is recrystallization so recrystallization is the process normally in which deformed grains of the crystal structure are replaced by new and stress-free grains so what is here it's recrystallization annealing so what happens after cold working to restore restore strain hardening capacity of the material and to get fine gain grain microstructures mm. we do this recrystallization and uh, heating temperature is again below a1 so again we will not worry about the cooling and expected microstructure and properties fine recrystallized microstructure good strength and ductility because of grain refinement next is hardening hardening is uh, one of the like it's one of the quite important heat treatment and it's done to impart uh, high hardness to steel by producing martensite in the steel so um, <clears throat> since uh, since martensite is a very hard face and also have a very high strength uh, you you can see this uh, plates of uh, martensite and this zigzag arrangement here <clears throat> so uh, let's see the heating temperature is given as about 50 degrees celsius above a3 for hypo uh, eutectoid and 50 degrees celsius above a1 for hyper eutectoid cooling water quenching or cooling rate high enough to miss the nose of ccd curve um, okay we have discussed about it and uh, expected microstructure is of course martensite may also contain quench cracks very high hardness but poor ductility okay so these are the like this is what happens when you get martensite of course the ductility is poor or like there is no ductility at all so when you do actually uh, when you do water quenching if your product is big there will be a lot of thermal stress in the material so it is actually always advisable to add alloying elements if you want to do hardening so uh, so that the nose of the curve shift to right and you can um, you can have a little slower cooling but also but yet at the same time you can get martensite so next is tempering now suppose you have done hardening so to, uh, it's impact impart ductility to steel after hardening so now if you like for example you have done, done hardening and uh, there is no ductility in your product and you want it to be uh, you want it to be ductile and in such case you do this heat treatment called tempering since martensite is very hard and brittle face even a small impact on the product of hardening will fracture so to impart the ductility we do tempering so this is the thing uh heated to 400 to 500 degrees celsius so that carbon precipitates out and cooling mm, there is no particular cooling martensite with precipitates of carbon and improves ductility however cost of strength okay a sample with martensite microstructure is hard but brittle during tempering martensite decomposes to ferrite and cementite on heating okay so next as I told you, mar tempering is a very special uh, technique, and uh, 
So to reduce the thermal stress in hardening hardened steel, ma tempering is done, and uh, you can see here. You can see like what all the um, conditions or under what all the um, conditions you do this uh, um, ma tempering. Fifty the, the temperature zone is given, and the thing about the, the cooling is actually interesting in ma tempering the procedure of cooling. Here you see the cooling stops just before MS temperature. MS means from where the martensitic transformation starts. For achieving uniform temperature throughout the sample and then quench to martensitic uh, start zone. So expected microstructure is martensite with lower stress. Next is ostempering to get bainite by isothermal transformation. We know that in CCT, uh, uh, CCT uh, transformation or by continuous cooling transformation we can never get bainite. But uh, what if you want, uh, you are looking for a benetic microstructure in your product? In such case, you have to go for something called ostempering. And the temperature zone is given here. And the microstructure property is will be benite and good strength and ductility. So with this, uh, we finish the uh, different heat treatments. But there are even, there are, Actually, even more um, heat treatments are possible uh, with materials, but one has to have uh, good knowledge of uh, microstructure, kinetics, as well as thermodynamics of the material. And hence, uh, as, per your, as per one's need and uh, as per the microstructure as well as the mechanical properties you are looking for, you can actually uh, modify the heat treatment okay so so thank you so much and we are uh, we are done with this uh, chapter 5